What that means is that you have to go back home and study the topic again and come back to meet the teacher at his or her convenient time to assess your knowledge of the topic. This is called a makeup class or the Russian word atrabotka. Hello friends, welcome back to the vlog. In today's video, I'll be talking about how Russian med school works. Maybe you've been admitted to Russian med school, you want to study here, or you just want to compare how it works in Russia and how it works in your country, then you're welcome. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Emma and I'm a final year medical student studying at Siberian State Medical University. I talk about productivity, health and wellness. If you're interested in that kind of content, consider clicking that subscribe button below and let's get straight to it. First of all, let's talk about the medium of instruction. The medium of instruction is basically Russian. But as more and more foreign students began to come here, several schools decided to start the English medium program. However, there are some schools again that will move you to Russian medium immediately you complete your preclinical classes, that's after your third year. Some universities will move you to Russian medium. There are some universities that are going to finish English medium for the six years. There are a lot of things to know about choosing which one to do between English or Russian medium which I will make a whole video on that. When that video is ready, I will link it up here. That brings us to the length of the program. If you're gonna study in Russian, the length of the program is automatically seven years because you're gonna spend the first year studying Russian, biology, chemistry, physics, mathematics in Russian language. It is called the preparatory department. And after that, you can apply for the medical program. And if you're gonna study in English, it's possible to go straight to the medical program, in which case the length of the program will be six years for you. However, there are some universities here that will tell you, you must do the uh, preparatory department first, even though you're gonna study in English, because it's gonna help you when you get to the clinical classes in terms of communicating with patients and stuff like that. I'll talk more about that later. Next one is the entrance exam. Even if you've been admitted in Russian med school, you still have to pass an entrance exam because Russians like documentation. They want to make sure you pass through every process. So you still pass the entrance exam because even the locals, they passed entrance exam to get into the med uni. This exam is just biology and chemistry, and I don't think it's like rocket science. Depending on how big the batch is, all of you might not be having lectures together. For example, they're going to divide you into lecture groups. They call it patok in Russian. So and uh, you're going to have lectures differently, even though you're all the same batch, the same first year, you have different uh, lecture groups. Then they have what they call the groups, which sounds like grupa in Russian. There will be not more than 15 people in this group. You go to seminar classes together. So you have lectures and you have what is called the class. In Russian, it's called Zaneati or it's called Uruk. Let's talk about the seminar class, which is very interesting. So before the class, the teacher sends you the topic of the class. You need to study the topic before coming to class. In fact, we have a phrase in Russian, which sounds like Gatovitsa k Zaneati. This means prepare for the lesson. So you need to be prepared before you come to the lesson. In fact, the teacher sits down in the lesson and there will be not more than 15 people in this class. And the teacher will ask each and every one of you questions to assess your knowledge of the topic. Of course, the teacher will, you know, give you more information on what you need to know. But first of all, they believe the student must study before the class. That was the first shock I had when I came because where I come from, it doesn't happen like that. You just come, teacher might not know you. You just sit and listen to the teacher and, you know, go home. If eventually you couldn't answer very well, the teacher will give you a mark too. It sounds like the var in Russian. What that means is that you have to go back home and study the topic again and come back to meet the teacher at his or her convenient time to assess your knowledge of the topic. This is called a makeup class or the Russian word atrabotka. So you need to pass actually a topic, not just exams or tests or control words. You need to start passing from the topic of each class. So every class in Russian med school is like an exam. Now in some university, you actually need to pay money to go for this makeup class because the teacher is spending extra time, you know, to assess your knowledge in this topic. 
But my university didn't ask for money to do makeup classes. But I know universities, my friends there told me that if you are to have a makeup class, you need to pay money to do it. If you miss classes for no reason at all, it means you have to repeat the class or do what is called the atrabotka, like we said. If you miss classes because you are ill, you still need to get a medical certificate from the general practitioner or from your doctor, which is an evidence that you are ill and they can permit you to miss the class. Talking about the assessment, in Russian med school, you can either get mark five, four, three, or two in every exam, test, or whatever. They don't deal with 100%, 85%, and stuff like that. So five means excellent. Uh, it's like the distinction in my country. Four means very good, uh, three means satisfactory, and two is fail or unsatisfactory. If you aim aiming to hit a first class, you should be aiming at getting 75 to 80% of fives and try to avoid the guy three. Another interesting area is the approach to the study of anatomy, which I love so much. In fact, in my first year and second year, anatomy used to be my favorite subject. So whenever I bring my anatomy textbook to study, I'm always happy studying it and it made a huge impact in my life as a medical student. Uh, the approach to the study of anatomy here is quite different from how it is in my country. In my country, they study regional anatomy. That's like uh, taking the upper limb and studying everything about the upper limb, but the bones, the muscles, the arteries, veins, and all structures of the upper limb. And then they go maybe to the lower limb, and then they go to the trunk, head and neck, uh, pelvic, and perineum. But in Russia, you start studying the bones of the body. It is called osteology. So the first part of anatomy in Russian medicine is osteology, whereby you get to study all the bones of the body, uh, ending in the bones of the cranium. In fact, the most difficult for me was when we got the viscera bones of the cranium, when we had to identify all the foramens and openings there, you know, but I managed to scare through. The last part is usually the nervous system, which brings the integrity of the body into consideration. So neuroanatomy is usually the last part in fact, in some universities, they have a separate exam for neuroanatomy. But in my uni, we did anatomy for three semesters before we passed the exam. Talking about exam, in Russia, it's interesting. What Russians call exam must be oral. You must talk, 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 talk. In my country, exams might have two parts. For medical school, you have the written part and then you have the oral part. But in Russia, everything is oral. Anything you've written is for yourself. How it works is that closer to the exam, the department will release a list of questions that covers the entire program you have done under that course. Those questions point to the most important things they are looking out for in the exam. So I basically use those questions for revision just to make sure that I cover the most important part that I think the teacher will be asking about Finishing the whole questions means that you covered the entire subject that you've studied. You come inside the exam hall, there are pieces of paper called tickets. Russians call them billet. You pick one of them and they will give you, the examiner will give you about 20 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, as the case may be, to prepare. You sit down and get ready. You might decide to write something on a piece of paper. When your time elapses, you come and sit down close to the examiner at a hot seat, and then the examiner starts asking you a question. But in reality, what you've written on those paper is just nonsense because they're waiting to hear you speak. In Russia, you must talk. You must know how to speak. Every student in Russia has a record book. In this book, after each exam or uh, credit, the teacher or the examiner in charge of that exam signs inside your record book and write down the point of your grade for the exam and put his or her signature. You hold this book. The university hold their record and you have your own record. So at the end of the day, there wouldn't be any argument over documentation of anything. As you remember, I told you, Russians like documentation. Everything must be well documented in Russian. So this record book is called Zachot Nayaknishka in Russian. Talking about re-examination. Re-examination is uh, for those who didn't pass the exam or you got the mark two, you have another chance to try. And uh, if you screw that up, you might have the option of stepping down one year, joining your juniors and losing one year in university, 
or sometimes it might lead to expulsion, in which case you are bundled back home. Talking about the breaks and number of semesters, the semester starts exactly on the 1st of September. That's one thing I like about Russia. It must start on the 1st of September, except if the 1st of September is a Sunday, in which case they will push it to Monday. So you start from September and study till the end of December. That means on 25th of December, which is Christmas in my country and in so many countries, you must go to class. On the 31st of December, you might be in class again. And then from the 1st of January to the 7th of January, you are going to have a break. 7th of January is actually the Russian Christmas. So we celebrate Christmas here on the 7th of January, wherever I see you on the 7th of January and say Merry Christmas. So you should accept that. Your first semester exam might come between the end of January and beginning of February. And so after first semester exam, you might be lucky to get another one week for a break and then you speed up again until June, July, where you take your second semester exam and then summer might begin. But don't be in a hurry to go because in summer, in Russia, you still have what we call the summer practice in med uni. So in summer, you still have to go to the hospital and practice for a period of time. Fast fact, this practice actually affects your overall GP because they're still gonna give you the mark 5, 4, 3 or 2 as the case may be. After your first three years, the fourth year, fifth and sixth year, you meant to go to the hospital and have practice like every other clinical rotation. So in Russian, they have what they call TICO, which is like cycle. Our international student call it rotation, whereby you have a period of time where you cover a particular subject or a particular department in clinical medicine. And after that, you go to another one. Within this time, you are supposed to see patients, uh, you know, do the practicals and then submit a kind of patient history that you have written within this period. This is very, very important in Russia, writing anamnesis or patient history. It's so important in clinical medicine in Russia because you have to take it home, actually type it and bring it like a report to your teacher. And sometimes the teacher rejects it and say that you've not done enough work and you have to go back and write again about your patient, a lot of stuff. This is called Historia Balezny in Russian. The last exam you're going to pass in Russian Med University, which I'm preparing for now, is called the state exam. It's going to have questions from different aspects of medicine that you've done over the six years. You have a test question to do and then you have clinical cases to do and then there's a kind of practical part. After that, they can certify you a doctor. Thanks for watching this video. Please hit the like button, comment down below and subscribe. That's the only way to support my channel for now and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.